Hi, sugar. My name is LaShawn Michelle, executive chef of the Dow Face Chef located in Bloomfield, Michigan. On today, we are going to get into this adorable heart cake. Um, let's get started. So in order to produce this cake, it is very simple. It is your favorite batter, um, your favorite cake mix. It is gelatin, milk or creamer. I prefer creamer, but milk gives it the same effect. However, creamer gives it a smoother taste a few days after it's been cooked. Um, typically four to six eggs. I like four to be safe so that it doesn't make it too fluffy. Um, and two sticks of butter. So we're starting with our mixes. Um, and the first thing that I add is my dry ingredients. So you're gonna wanna go into adding gelatin. Now any flavor, um, any brand of gelatin will work, but I prefer vanilla because it hides um, in the flavors of the mix. Two sticks of butter. When cutting your eggs, you want to leave them out for maybe 20 minutes when, before you bake. Uh, very similar to what I do with my butter. My butter is always at room temperature. Butter that's not at room temperature gets a little clunky and can mess up your cake. Once I have my um, ingredients in before I put in my milk or creamer, I do like to go in and mix everything in before I add um, the other ingredients. Now this is two cups of milk or creamer. It's totally up to your taste and it works perfectly. Sometimes it gets a little messy and that's okay. That's when you're producing love on a plate, it can get a little messy. Um, now what I'll do with my KitchenAid typically, um, if you have a hand mixer, I'd say be prepared to mix for maybe 10 minutes with a table mixer or a KitchenAid preferably you're looking at about five minutes mix time because you want to whip that air in there so that it's fluffy. That's super important. Okay, so what I was saying is that you want to make sure that your, um, your products are at room temperature because once you bake, it can put holes in your cake and that's no fun. So what we will do is we'll mix it slow on a controlled speed and as you mix it, make sure that all the products are mixed. So we get these fancy smancy mixers and we get going with them, but you still have to do the leg work. So once you get to get this all mixed in and you take it off, you want to always, 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 always take your, spat your spatula, can be something as simple as this, and mix among the bottom so that your batter is completely mixed and you're ready to go because we're almost at that point of putting it in the oven. I love baking. I've been baking since I was about eight. Um, it's been a passion of mine. Funny story, when I was eight years old, I prepared to go to the library and I was reading a Babysitter's Club book. Now, if you're, I probably just told my age with that, but if you've read Babysitter's Club books, there's often recipes in the back, and there was a walnut brownie recipe that I was obsessed with, which you will see in further episodes. Um, I put a little coconut on top of it, put it in the oven, and almost burned my mom's darn house down. I set the oven on fire, and I was still proud of those brownies. They turned out okay, just the toppings were completely burnt. But it, it sparked that fire and ignition into wanting to bake. So if you are an aspiring baker, don't be afraid. Sometimes you'll set stuff on fire, sometimes things won't work. Keep pushing. One day you'll wake up and your cakes will be perfect. But it does take the legwork and um, drive to be able to do it. Now we're gonna stop and we're going to go into um, putting our batter into 
We're gonna go into putting our batter into the pan. Shake it a little bit. Now this is what I was talking about. So it looks like it's all there and you've done it. But you actually have to go in and really, really make sure it's mixed in because a lot of times the spatula for these mixers doesn't reach the bottom of the bowl and scrape and you don't want to have a chalky taste to your batter. So we'll start here. You put about half of the batter in one pan and then half of the batter in the other pan. So when I started the Doll Face Chef, um, I wanted to emulate my Southern roots with my family. And we have a saying in our family where we call all of our food love on a plate. So that is the theme and the premise of my company. It's really simple and anyone can do it. So don't get discouraged as you're baking. Just try again and learn. Those mistakes build your career and teaches you how to get going. So you just spread it out. The cake is going to be stacked. You, you try to attempt to have an even amount in both pans. Sometimes a good old shake works. You preheat your oven, you preheat your oven to about 350 before you get started. And depending upon the oven that you are using, um, depends upon the cook time. A residential oven would take about um, 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes with you watching it sporadically. And a commercial oven sometimes can take as little as 10 minutes to get going. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Our beautiful cake is in the oven. It has about 10 more minutes to go. Five to 10 more minutes, we'll check in in a sec. But for right now, we wanna get into this buttercream. So buttercream is one of those things that can be a bit intimidating if you're not used to it. Um, you do have to be flexible with the ingredients and adjust as you go. So what we utilize is two cups of confectionery sugar that's also known as powdered sugar. We utilize a half a cup of buttercream, I'm sorry, a half a cup of butter that is at room temperature. What I like to do with this is I like to melt my butter and then let it sit. And it typically merges all those flavors and tastes together. I also have vanilla extract. Now with vanilla extract, you can use one to two tablespoons, but you do it at your discretion and at your taste. And lastly, I use a tablespoon and a half of milk or um, creamer again, that's the toss up, is based upon what you like. Now, to get started with the buttercream, we sift our confectionery sugar. So it typically takes a moment and people don't like to utilize this recipe because you have to knock out all of those little bubbles. So as you can see, it's all bumpy, that matters. Um, a trick that I've used before is I'll knock them out myself and it normally sifts them down where you can see the difference. So if you look at what's here and then you look down here, this is much smoother, which does impact how your buttercream comes out. So I normally will um, spoon it around until I get all of it through, or you can do it the old fashioned way and put a little muscle into it. It does turn out pretty good. I like to shake it out. It does um, produce results a lot faster. Now, here is my preference. I'll typically, when it gets down to here, these little curds, I'll toss them. So when you go in and you toss them, um, you can start fresh with the next batch. This can be time consuming, but when done right, it uh, makes your cakes perfect. It really does. I remember um, when I was new to making buttercream and to baking, I actually went in and used um, two little wet ingredients and my buttercream was like concrete. <laughs> the next day when I sliced the cake and it was for a family function, 
it was hard as ever. The cake was delicious, but the buttercream was not. So prepare yourself to give yourself some grace and patience when you are creating these things because baking is a science and sometimes you have to find that science that works for you. Now the next step that we'll go into is we'll add um, the butter as we mix. So once you've sifted everything, you want to get your mixer prepped so that you can prepare for to mix your ingredients. Now this is the tricky part where you have to you have to trust yourself because I um, measure out my ingredients, but I often adjust them based upon my needs and my clients. Some of my clients like things that are, they like the buttercream that's thick. Others like more of a smooth taste. So what I would do is you start mixing on low, start mixing on low and gradually adding your wet ingredients. Based upon what you pitched when you were sifting your, your confectionery sugar, you may use less of the wet ingredients and that's okay. Go in and mix it. Now our ingredients are a little wet. I am going to add a bit more confectionery sugar to this just to thicken it up a bit, but that is completely normal. So again, this is an item in the baking industry that you have to give yourself grace and patience with. And we'll be right back. So we are now moving into wrapping up our buttercreams. So in our last section, the buttercream wasn't there. It was a little too murky, so we thickened it up and we put a little bit of confectionery sugar in there. And now we're almost at that point. We do have to do a um, quick testing to see what it tastes like to make sure that it's going to be um, to the consistency that we want. Buttercream is forever changing, so you just have to be patient and roll with it. So now you mix it, let it mix up a little bit. Um, I like to take it out when it gets to this point because it can be temperamental and just mix it a little bit by hand. Um, a traditional stand mixer will over mix your buttercream. So be aware of that, that it may take it a little bit too far. So you just have to slow it down and make sure it tastes and it feels to the consistency, consistency that you like. I like my buttercream creamy. Um, creamy buttercream should have like a little thinner than a paste consistency. So if you look here, it stands alone. So if I put it on a cupcake, it's not gonna drag, but it's smooth enough when you do drag it and you see it to where it'll easily glide against the cake. So now we're gonna put this away so they can chill. I always chill my buttercream before um, I put it on a cake. It's no need to put it into a freezer. You can put it into a regular, a regular residential refrigerator and it will chill just fine and be ready for decorating. We'll be right back. It's time. Let's check on our beautiful cakes. They are golden brown and ready. So we're gonna pop these um, into the fridge and we will be right back. Welcome back guys. So at this point, where it's time to have some fun. So our beautiful heart-shaped cakes are ready to roll. And when you bake your cakes and you get them to this golden consistency, um, you have to make sure they're completely cooled. So anticipate leaving them in the freezer for about maybe 30 minutes, 45 if your freezer doesn't get that cold. And when they come out, the first thing you wanna do is utilize 
a knife or a spatula and you go and you pop it up all the way around to the point where you feel like it's completely free. Once it's completely free, you have to trust yourself because it's gonna be a little scary, but you take your hand here, you flip it over. My cake is completely cool. Flip it down. Now you, do, you never, ever, ever put this type of cake face down. It's always gonna be like this. And the reason for that is that your base has baked flat. So you don't wanna flip it over or when you get ready to decorate your cake, it will be lumpy. We have mixed our um, buttercream so where it's at a smooth consistency so that we can ice the center of our cake. But buttercream can puree, especially when you're utilizing dairy products. So the safe thing to do would be to turn it on for maybe 60 seconds just to make sure that it's smooth because you want it to run across your cake with no issues. And that's the texture you want. Now this is a bit of movie magic that you're seeing because I did mix it before I came on camera. Just flop it down, take it off. And it should look like this. So this is smooth and ready to go, it's super easy and it'll easily go across your cake. Now don't be alarmed, this cake is not frozen yet, it's just chilled. So you don't want to go in rough because your entire cake will break up. So you just wanna put a dollop there and you don't wanna rub that dollop in because you need it to freeze. We will be doing more with this cake a little bit deeper into the decorating process. So be patient with yourself. You see how gentle I'm being with it? Treat it like the top of a baby's head. You don't want to um, do too much. A uh, simpler way at times, if you're comfortable with baking, is to utilize a piping bag and do this. But I like to get my hands all involved and get all nitty and gritty. So I like to do mines this way. So that way I can see that my cake icing is smooth. Because in the piping bag, you can't tell. You're just squeezing it all the way around and that may be okay, but if you have not done your leg work or gotten comfortable, um, you could have challenges later on when it's time for the cake to cure together. And you may be wondering, why are you using saran wrap? It's a cool little trick that I learned from a little baker lady that knows who she is. Um, when I was little, I used to go to all the elders' houses on the street. I was greedy and I wanted a plate from everyone. So since my parents worked and I was a latchkey kid, um, my family has Southern values. So our families have lived on the same streets forever and we um, would go to all the elders' homes and I learned to wrap my cakes in saran wrap and freeze them when I was a little girl. And it actually works and it's foolproof and it actually puts you into a position to where it looks like you know what you're doing even when you don't. So you flip it over, be gentle. Remember it's not cured like this. And if you've done it right, it should be aligned. But it's super soft. So right now I'm gonna stop this process and freeze it. Because if I, if I add cake icing all the way around, it's gonna break up completely. And even though we are covering it in fondant, we do like a clean base because it makes everything much easier. So we're gonna pop this in the freezer once it's wrapped for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and it will be ready for, font, for an additional dirty layer of icing. Now you may ask, what is a dirty layer of icing? It's the layer of icing before you decorate. So what you do is you put it on and that dirty layer is not going to be pretty. That's why, hence the name, dirty layer of icing. So that's why it's going to have a bit of um, cake crumbs. Some people call it a crumb coat, but it's the exact same thing. You just wanna cover it. Now I've covered it from the bottom as well. This is the way that I was taught. And you wrap it around to the shape of the cake. Be patient with yourself because saran wrap can um, tend to merge together. Just take your time. Typically when I do this, my cake is due in a day or so. 
so I'm in no rush. And this is the way it should look. It should be completely wrapped and it's also wrapped at the bottom. It's a simple birthday cake that you can do for your kids or for someone you love. So we're just gonna pop this in the freezer and we'll be right back. Okay guys, now we're to the fun part. We have a few ingredients. We have store grade fondant, you can use any brand. We have the Dow Face Chef Baker's Bond. Now if you're not familiar with Baker's, Baker's Bond, old school bakers call it piping gel. <laughs> so right now we call it Baker's Bond and it's so much smoother just to put it in a jar and be able to pour it. I have confectionery sugar that I'll be using to coat the counter when I roll out my fondant. And a quick pro tip, we are using luster dust on this cake. And one of the things I, I like to do is um, utilize Baker's Bond in my luster dust. It's so much smoother, so much easier to utilize rather than um, using alcohol to actually paint the candies or the cake that you'll be utilizing. And I have a jar of crushed um, red candies that we'll be using in the center of the cake um, to create the Geode Heart Cake. So first, we're gonna go in and we're gonna roll out our fondant. Now, um, if you've never utilized fondant, the easiest thing to do is to have it room temperature. You never put it in the freezer because if you put it in the freezer or the fridge, it um, actually will harden and you won't be able to use it. So you lightly dust your counter and you utilize your fondant in the form of a ball. So it's going to be hard in some spots. And if it is, I like to use my pinch method. And the easiest way to pinch it is just to break it down in the areas that it's hard. You may you need to cover the larger piece that you're not using in saran wrap, but I don't need to do that because I'm gonna move fast. So what you do with those areas that are super hard is you break it and just pinch it like Play-Doh. Just treat it like you used to utilize Play-Doh as a kid. And you roll it into a ball, put a little muscle into it. So I'm not working out today. <laughs> so this will all align and work together. You may need a little bit more of your confectionery sugar, which stops the fondant from sticking, and you create a ball. Creating a ball will cultivate an, evil, uh, an even ball of fondant. So with the heart-shaped cake that I'm covering, I'm creating the ball so that there's an even amount once it's rolled out. If you skip this step, your fondant will not be even. And you don't want to roll it out to where it's so thin that you can see through the cake. That's a mistake many bakers make. You just flip it and keep it going. And we have our cake in the freezer, by the way. It's curing from the last time that we iced it. We are gonna take it out in a bit and dirty ice it, but this is just some prep work that we can do while the cake is prepared. You wanna turn it because as you can see, this side is much flatter, this is much higher. So you turn it around. Don't worry about using too much powdered sugar. You cannot, it'll blend in once you do your cake. Just keep turning it. And if you're worried about covering the cake completely, just grab your cake pan, Flip it over and place the fondant in the center to ensure that you've made it large enough. It's always good to do it too big rather than too small. Gently flip it so that you can move it around. Now when I get to this point, I typically hit the edges to make sure that I don't have any thick edges on my cake. I'm testing it to ensure it's not sticking to the counter. So it's important to pay attention to what you're doing and take your time. 
Nobody's perfect, no baker is perfect. Take your time, take your time to ensure that you roll it out. However, in the winter, you do not want to have the heat on high with your fondant out because it will cure. And in the summer, you want to be careful having the AC turned up because it can harden and then you, it won't cover the cake, especially store grade fondant. Marshmallow fondant is a bit easier, but I don't like the taste, it's just my thing. So what we can do from this point is we will fold it here and we will grab our cake out of the freezer. We'll be right back. Okay guys, we're ready for the next step. We are going to utilize the paneling method with our cake. So we, what you do is you get your pan and you're gonna cut the top out. Now remember, we have powdered sugar up under the fondant so that it does not stick because it's prone to do that. And you take your knife and you cut into the shape of the top of the cake. Now be prepared um, to have to stretch it or adjust when you put it on top. You pull your fondant, roll it into a ball, sit it to the side. Now it's a perfect little heart, it's adorable. You take it out, take a flat spatula, move it over and sit it here. You're gonna see why I put it on saran wrap when, the, when I take the cakes out because it's a super simple method. All you're gonna do, put your cake here, flip it. You're not gonna try to be adventurous and pull it off. You're gonna flip it onto the top of your cake. And for the sides, you roll it out, measure it, cut it out and do the same process. And then you sit it in the freezer to cure while you decorate. We'll be right back. Okay guys, now we're ready to wrap up in the home stretch. We have our chilled cake that is dirty iced. Um, a dirty ice cake does not need to be completely covered. So we're just going to jump in and cover, we're gonna panel the portion of our cake around the trim. Once we panel that, we add the top and we can add our fun decorations. So you just want to fill it up to the height of the cake. Keep it going. Now fondant is messy and fondant can look weird when you're in the process, so don't freak out. Just cover it. As you maneuver with your fondant, you just add a little powdered sugar, rub it into your countertop so that it does not stick. Here. And now it's time to panel. So when paneling a heart cake, you're gonna start here. You're going to panel up, panel around. Don't worry about the flat part. You want to cover the base. And then you go around and you cut it so that it's measured. Here, bring it up. Utilize your tool to impress the fondant in so that it stays. Keeping the shape of the cake always. Bring it around. You'll see where you need to cut it so that it's paneled and clean. And then you put your roller there so that it matches. So don't worry if it's initially messy because it will clean up as you go. So you're gonna cut here along the base of your cake because it's almost time to add the lid. As long as you went over far enough, it'll work. Panel 
pressing is relatively easy um, once you continue to do it. So I'm impressing the shape. I like to use my hands. You can use a tool, but it's easier if you use your hands against the cake. Cut the top off. Make sure it's shaped. Again, push it up. Utilize your roller to make sure that it is attached. This is why it's very important to make sure that you dirty ice your cake. and you get comfortable and you impress so that the two become one, push all the way around. You'll cut off the extra. Now don't push too much because you'll tear your fondant. And put your excess fondant away. Now we're gonna cut. The simpler way to do this is scissors to make everything conjoin into one. Just don't cut it down too far. You only wanna cut the excess. As you come in with the excess, your next step is going to be able to add the candy onto your cake using the piping gel. So you're gonna cut it down just a little bit here. Cut a little off the top here. You don't want to dig in too deep, so you'll feel like you're cutting just the top portion. That's what you should be cutting. And once you do that, you add your piping gel, and that works as glue. Your piping gel or Baker's Bond, whichever you want to call it, and that'll operate as your glue. Be careful because it will go over on your fondant. And the easiest, most fun way to do it is to just pour your candies for them to stick. Now we crush them for a reason. The bigger pieces go into the gaps and the smaller pieces fill in the crevices to make it pretty. So just keep pushing until you fill the space completely. But don't forget to add your Baker's Bond so that it can actually stick. It's easier to put something under it so that you don't have a huge mess when you're done. 
I've made this cake so many times for Valentine's Day and anniversaries. We typically add a name onto the front. It is a popular addition in my bakery and available on our website. So it may appear to be bare, but our last step is going to seal the deal and have everything come together. It's kind of like playing Legos, so you have to make sure that your pieces fit and keep going until they do. Just pour it gradually so it can stick. When we first started making this cake, we used to call it our heartbreak cake. And so we sold it as a divorce cake, a breakup cake. Now it's all love. Everyone wants it for their anniversary or wedding as a um, additional cake to go into the bridal suite. So now we're in the home stretch and what we're gonna do is take a quick paper, piece of paper towel, clean this up and then you paint around the rim and the cake is done. And what you can do is utilize um, various toppers, messages or however you would like to present it to the person you're giving it to. We just add a little razzle dazzle to it. And the idea of adding the gold adds some sparkle, but it also adds an additional um, element to the cake. So just take your time paint around it. So don't worry about that. We'll take that off with a wet cloth. Keep going. you want to let it drizzle and get on the cake you may have to add a little bit more piping gel but once you know it's done you know so in the areas where the piping gel is wet you let it drip down this side you just lightly dust it for some cohesiveness so now we go into the cleanup process Sometimes you have to take rubbing alcohol to make this happen. Some form of alcohol, you can actually use real alcohol to clean up piping gel. But you go through.
since it's our version of love on a plate. And there you have it. This is our love on a plate cake that can be found at dollfacechef.com. It is our website where we have shippable treats, a brand new cookbook that's coming out on Mother's Day of 2024. Um, feel free to visit us at any time. And if you enjoyed watching me, wait until you see what we do next. We have some phenomenal recipes coming um, that will escalate and the difficulty will become greater as we go through the episodes. I'm happy to teach you anything you'd like to know. Thank you for joining. Have a great day.